Last time we talked about some core questions that you should be considering when you read a scientific paper. In particular, what is the scientific question that they're asking? What's their hypothesis? And remember that the hypothesis is a general idea, a sort of general proto-theory, not a specific prediction for a specific experimental method. Then, what is their experiment? What are the manipulations that they're doing? Um, and what are they measuring? And remember, we talked in a separate video about keeping these two aspects of the materials and methods straight. And in fact, even sometimes there are long-term manipulations and then an immediate little prod to the system and followed by a measurement. Um, for example, a long-term deprivation of sensory input followed by an immediate stimulation of some sort and then a, um, a follow-up measurement. And in fact, the paper that we're going to be talking in a little bit more detail about today does exactly that sort of thing. Once you know the experiment and the measurements and you have the hypothesis, then you can start to make specific predictions. That is, if your hypothesis is correct, what will the results be? And once you have that, then you do the experiment, measure what the results actually are, and then relate these results back to the experiment and predictions and hypothesis. However, um, there are a variety of other things that you should consider when looking into a paper. The first is, if you're presenting the paper, that you should look at the background work that they are drawing on. Now, in order to find this, we're going to be using this publication here as an example, The Synaptic Basis for Whisker Deprivation in Somatosensory Cortex. This work builds on a lot of different pieces of evidence, um, and in fact, the purpose of the introduction is to lay out the background work upon which they're building. As you read through the introduction, you'll see a few different ideas and a few different pieces of background work that they're building on. There's not any one right answer about how to decide which piece of evidence to include if you're presenting the paper, but one thing that is usually useful to do is to um, find uh, past work that's been done in this lab or just as you're reading the introduction, uh, highlight those things that seem to be most relevant to the question that you already identified from your reading of the abstract. So one piece of background work that this paper is building on um, is uh, this paper here involved, uh, it was published a few years earlier from the same lab, looking at and providing evidence for the existence of long-term synaptic depression that happens following changes in sensory deprivation. Um, I won't go through the entire details of this paper. However, one of the things that they discovered, for example, is that um, an animal with normal experience, all five rows of whiskers along its face behave similarly in terms of their synaptic responses. However, if you pluck out just one row of whiskers, then that row has weaker synaptic responses. So, for example, if I were presenting this paper, then this is probably one figure that I would include in my presentation before I moved into the data from this paper here, which is the focus of my presentation. 